Hey teacher, a series of grammar games, or as I'd like to call it, GG. I'll be sharing some grammar activities I've done with my students that I hope you and your students benefit from them too. This is my first episode of the GG series, so if this sounds like something you're interested in, subscribe. So without further ado, welcome to your first GG. Let's begin with an easy yet super fun game. This game is perfect to revise the present progressive, the past progressive, propositions, or any grammar rule you find applicable. So after you've explained the grammar lesson, you gotta make sure they use it well, right? So instead of the not very exciting Q&A way, try this. Put your lovely students in groups and ask each group to have a piece of paper. Tell them, hey, beautiful students, I'm gonna show you a picture for 20 seconds. You and your team members have to remember what the people in this picture are doing. After the 20 seconds are over, you're allowed just then to start writing six sentences describing what you have seen using the present progressive on that piece of paper you have. Make sure in these 20 seconds, students are not cheating, you know, writing the sentences while the picture is on. The point here is to let students try to remember as many actions or in this case verbs as they can while applying the present progressive form in their heads. Also, not allowing them to write while the picture is on, you know, adds a little excitement to the game. Now, students will hop on on their papers writing the sentences. And to make things more interesting to me, not to them, I ask them to write, for example, three sentences using singular subjects only and the other three using plural subjects, just to make sure they're using the helping verbs correctly. The team finishes first, wins, but if they have some mistakes, then the win moves to the team with the least mistakes. So they read their sentences out loud and together we try to correct the mistakes if there were any. You can use the same picture for the past progressive, therefore your question will be what were these people doing yesterday, for example. You can also use the same picture to revise some propositions. It's either you provide them with a set of propositions to choose from or let them choose what they remember from the lesson. Moving on to our second GG. This grammar activity is perfect to let the students differentiate between the model verbs or revise the verbs that should be followed by two plus infinitive or gerund or any other grammar lesson you find applicable. As you know, the meaning of some model verbs or certain grammar structures can be tricky, especially in the negative forms. So I tried this activity with my students and they fully understood the lesson. After I've explained the different models and their functions, I wrote some very short sentences using models on a piece of paper and cut them into strips. I divided the students into two groups. I asked one student from team A to come and pick a strip. I told the students that he needs to act out the entire sentence. The student wanted to punch me in the face. The thing is, we usually play acting out games when we teach vocabulary, but I thought certain grammar words need to be acted out in order to be fully understood as well. So I wrote all of the model verbs we studied in that lesson on the board and I told them each sentence contains one of them. Your job is to add that sentence to your team without pointing at the word and tell them which model you got. If their level is not that advanced, we agree on a certain hand gesture. For example, this gesture for can, this one for must, for example, this one for should, and so on. This is how it went. The student who wanted to punch me in the face picked a strip. The sentence he got was, he has to clean. 
I told them you have 30 seconds to act and guess the sentence. So the students started acting. Pronoun he wasn't difficult to act. He pointed at one of his male classmates. Then he did this with his hands to act has to. But his team was like have to. He tried to act that no, no, the subject is he. So and eventually one student shouted has to. And the word clean was pretty easy to be acted out and bingo. As you have seen, we're not only revising grammar, but also practicing spoken grammar, structure, subject verb agreement, and for sure, some vocabulary. If you want a copy of this document, feel free to download it. Link is in the description below. The last GG is perfect to revise any tense in English or any grammar lesson you find applicable. After teaching the intended tense, let's say simple past, draw a box on the board and ask the students to name some verbs. Choose at least eight verbs. Tell the students that you're going to introduce an imaginary friend and give that imaginary friend a name and maybe draw a stick figure of it on the board too. I'd love to tease my students a little bit. So I tell them that you can't meet my friend unless you guess her name. Her name starts with letter C. So students are like, Cindy, no. Sandra, no. Ciara, no. Cat, no. You give up, yeah. Her name is coffee. What, miss, no. No one is called coffee. And I'm like, that's not true. That's offensive. I'd like you to meet Miss Coffee. And then I draw her on the board. So after I do this, I feel students get more excited to see what's next, you know? So on the board, we got the eight verbs. Our grammar lesson was about the simple past tense. And we have Miss Coffee. I divide the students into groups and I ask them to create a short story about Miss Coffee using all of the verbs on the board. And it should be in the past tense or the tense you're currently teaching. I like the activities where students can get creative like this one. But if you're doing this with beginners, then instead of a story, they might write simple sentences about Miss Coffee using the verbs on the board. I mean, as I mentioned in the beginning, of my video, you can adjust the level of the game to the level of your students. However, with advanced students, I ask them to write a short story but following a certain theme. So for example, write a sad short story about Miss Coffee or write a scary short story about Miss Coffee. Then after they're all done with their stories or sentences, we hear them up together and I try to move their attention to how they use the past tense verbs and correct them if they got any errors. That's pretty it. If you like this GG episode, don't forget to subscribe, you know, so you don't miss the next GG episode. Thank you for your precious time.